So, you want to upgrade your ship or legs, but either you don't know how or even worse, you don't even know what is engineering in the world of Elite Dangerous. Now, unless you've been living under a rock or stabbed in the ears with forks for some reason, let me be your bewildering guide in the world of HORRIFIC, PLAYER ABUSING AND MALICIOUS GAME DESIGN YOU HAVE EVER SEEN! I mean, juicy upgrades that will make your game better? Question mark? Be it the new Odyssey feet engineering for spacesuits and handheld weapons, or the good old overpowered and unbalanced ship uh, changes? Since this is going to be a bigger explanation, much like the ultimate mining guide, I'll list all the useful timestamps, links, and so on in the description. Additionally, if you find my information or the video in general interesting, informative, or hell, even if you feel pity for my life that was wasted actually using this garbage system that Frontier calls game design, I'll toss me a buck on Patreon. I really appreciate it. Anyways, let's jump in then. Right, well, sit the fuck down and listen up. Engineering, despite developers claiming that it's a side-grade system for ships, is utter bullshit. In fact, a lot of what developers claim and produce is. But for more in-depth detail as to why and what is so bad about it, do check out the video on how engineering broke the game. Today, however, let's not get into quite the levels of nerdy, nitpicky obsession. Though, if Elite was a dog, the nits we'd be picking would be human-sized leeches. Now, instead, I'll give you something to latch on to like a seven-year-old that's still being breastfed. So, engineering. These days, there are two types of it, but both basically are the same thing. Upgrade your gear in exchange for a currency called materials. These upgrades, like the plague, came from animals and was not meant for human consumption. By which I mean the actual balance seemed to be made by literal baboons. And while some are easily overpowered as fuck, likewise others are completely useless. For more information, do take a look at my best to worst series, it explains everything. As for that currency called materials. Well, some idiots think that something that has a name iron or tungsten on it is the same thing as the cargo in-game. But sorry, sunshine, if you're that fucking oblivious, then the carnival fair ride tickets that carnies give out are not just shitty pieces of paper, but golden Willy Wonka tickets as well, right? Anyways, these things you collect all over the place and their needed amount that is required, in fact, is to this day the absolute worst gameplay you'll ever have. You have my fucking guarantee. Basically, be it on space legs or ships, engineering is what we call this upgrade system from hell. Okay, so despite my warnings, you decided to push forward. You want those upgrades. What do you need? Well, besides the whole month's stockpile of antidepressants, and maybe a rope, just in case, as it is with Elite Dangerous always, you won't find any information in-game on how to actually do or play anything. Yep, once more developers have given very few facts on actually explaining what the fuck they made or how to use it. Yet again, as it always has been, you, my dear viewer, will have to resort to community of this game actually doing what the paid monkeys could not. So, third-party tools. Generally, when I go hunting for material garbage, I only need two tools. ED Engineer, a program that allows me to set a sort of a shopping list of materials, as well as to see how many of each material I already have on my character. The program is really, really useful, and frankly, it's so simple that it still baffles me how it's not in the fucking game already. But when it comes to quality of life, I guess we can't ask anything from Frontier. Moving on, then. The other tool that I tend to use is is Inara, a collection of information and online tools for the game. Mainly though, I need to just simply know where the closest material trader tends to be and general information as to what engineers are offering as an upgrade data. Alternatively, you can use Elite Database as well or some other tools, but that's up for you. Then, from time to time, I tend to peek into Wikipedia as well for the game. So hope you have two monitors, cause like everything in Elite, you will need it. As for the ship pen gear you might need, obviously not having upgrades, you can do this with bottom tier garbage truck from hell. But you will need to keep only four things in mind. Maximum jump range so you don't waste your time getting from place to place, SRV to pick up stuff from the planets, Probulator, that is the detailed surface scanner for planets, and collector limb pets and cargo space for them to pick up stuff in space. That's it, really, rest is up to you. 
let's then start with ship engineering, the only one that actually matters and will make the game more playable. Though before we can start upgrading your gear, you will need to unlock these engineers. Unlocking engineers is a pain in the ass, leftover design from back in the day, but it's just preparing you for the things to come. So, each engineer has its own required task you have to have completed to both have it discovered first and then unlocked. The process basically goes like this. You perform a required action to discover an engineer. After re-logging, probably the game tells you that the engineer is discovered and you go to it. After opening engineering menu, the stupid cunt tells you to do something else for them, like, I don't know, get 20 tons of razor-covered Jesus dildos or something. Then you go into Wikipedia to learn where the fuck to even find the damn thing, cause the game sure as fuck won't tell you. Once you deliver the crap, the engineer is unlocked and you can finally start upgrading. Now you need to pointlessly make many low-grade upgrades to increase reputation with the engineer to be able to use the higher level upgrades. Just as an extra leftover fuck you, I guess. Then, once you've reached appropriate interpretation, you may get another engineer discovered, for which you need to rinse and repeat this. So, basically, you will need a lot of Wikipedia help to unlock these cunts. Still, with each engineer, you can also pin, for later use in any starport, one of their base upgrades. So, here's a list of said recommended pinned mods. Oh, and these engineers also offer additional upgrade that really changes how your weapon and modules work, called experimental effects. This upgrade you can only get by visiting engineers, so I hope you like going back and forth. Now then, the materials for upgrades. The cursed RNG spawn token currency used to purchase these upgrades. Get it? Materials are currency, for fuck's sakes. Anyways, there are three types. Raw materials, collected on plant surfaces or in low quantities while mining. Unlike the other two, only reaches grade 4. Data materials, collected by scanning something, possibly the worst intended gathering gameplay I've ever seen in gaming, but we'll get to that. And manufactured materials, collected from exploding NPC ships or signal sources. To collect each, thankfully, the community has found, uh, shall we say, optimized methods, which will ruin your game for you. But trust me, not as much as the so-called intended quality gameplay. You can be sure of that. So, let's then go over how to collect each the fastest way. Oh, and I highly recommend playing this in Horizons version, cause, well, fuck Odyssey, the wretched piece of shit, but also, what's the point in burning your GPU needlessly and having lower frame rates with worse UI? Riddle me that, Batman. Starting with raw materials. Now, you could just scan a planet, look up its material composition and target things you need. Sure, but you'll be sitting in an SRV driving on a planet's surface and wait till RNG just spawns in the fucking rocks you need to shoot. That's the equivalent gameplay of performing self vasectomy with garrot wire, and at that point you should reconsider your life choices. Instead, you'll be shitting different rocks. Wait. Did I say shitting? I, I meant shooting! Uh, damn it, this is what happens when I don't proofread my scripts. Approximately 1,500 light years from the human bubble, there are these crystalline biological sites on planets, which, thanks to Probulate or Detailed Surface Scanner, you will find. I'll have the wiki page and additional third party site listed in the descriptions that will help you find exactly what type of material each has. But basically, these crystalline structures spawn in the highest grade of material all of the time. So, what you do is load up on them. Them, then go to Material Trader and convert them down to lower tier materials. This saves a lot more time and you better be familiar with this mechanic cause like a Catholic priest, you'll be abusing it maliciously. I only needed to fill up on these highest tier materials one and since then never needed to return. The raw materials generally are not used much for upgrades, so this is the least you'll need to do. Next up then is data materials. Original intended gameplay for this is so laced with RNGs and bad, idiotic and horrific gameplay, I urge you to never try it. For example, for the lowest most common materials, you sit there and scan some ships, any ships. For highest grade materials, you sit there and scan exactly the same ships. Much skill, such wow. And I think I'm gonna stab my eyes out now. Thanks! Anyways, how do we collect this crap then? Well, it's gonna be pretty shit time, but there is no better. So strap in! 
There is this one historic lore site in the game for a crashed ship, the Jameson crash site. And here you'll find four data points that once scanned will drop one of the four different materials. Grade 2, 3, 4 and 5. Here you'll only care to fill up on the grade 4 and 5. Once your inventory for them is full, you will go to the nearest material trader and convert them to whatever you may need. The way this farm works is really stupid, but once you are done scanning all four data points, you exit the game to main menu. Yes, log the fuck out of the game, Bob. Then log back in. Voila, the data points are now scannable once more. What a genius design. Quality gameplay. Uh, isn't it faster to scan the wakes? Good luck with consistency. Good luck with consistency. Collect and collect and collect and uh, go insane slowly. So that's what we're gonna do today, ladies and gents. Or just gents, I guess. Uh, how can any game designer allow this kind of a thing to exist? That's exactly the same question I have asked in my videos, in my streams, time and time again. And it's a perfectly wonderful question for exactly the funny thing is that that question alone impl well not implies but uh, encompasses multiple things first of all the fact that this is happening is an indication that uh, the normal gameplay is crap the other versions are just crap and also that requirement the amount of crap that you need to scan or collect right uh, is insane in comparison to, let's say, normal uh, games that don't prey upon your attention and your time and your willingness to sit there and basically be a fucking idiot. Seriously though, despite how bad this is and the horrible experience it creates, it's nothing in comparison to what the quote-unquote intended gameplay is. For context, let's say you were playing Elite Dangerous in 2016 when Horizons and Engineers launched. You would be spending hundreds of hours sitting in front of a space station waiting for NPC ships to pass by, while scanning them and their wakes. Then go to conflict zones and like a dumb chimp stare at the ships like some sort of a sci-fi version of a peeping Tom the child molester in the bushes. Ultimately, after 10 hours of this, you would get, at best, the same shit you would get today in this crash site after an hour. And I'm not kidding, that's how bad the grind is. So, if you really need an upgrade, this sadly is the fastest, least uh, ruinous, quote-unquote, gameplay. Oh, and I also have solo video focusing on this very method, so do check it out as well. Speaking of horrific, counterintuitive, shit-laden abortion of a quality game design. Manufactured materials. Oh, fuck me. Okay, so you could go to a place called Dove's Hope. The site spawns in all manner of grade 3 and 4 materials, but as much as it's cool to see them on the ground, once more, it's more of a waste of your time compared to the best option. Instead, get your ship, collect your limpets, and head to, well, really any system with decent amount of population, and potentially close by celestial objects. You will be searching for high-grade emission signal sources. At first, when arriving in the system, scanning nav beacon will reveal all signal sources themselves, but as the new ones spawn in after either the old ones run out at the time or what not else, go to the nav beacon again, or maybe just like me, just use the fucking shit scanner that is the FSS. Once you find a high grade signal source, look at its timer and if it has a decent lifetime left, head to it. Here's then that trick. If you jump into it, collect whatever materials float around, this is where the collector limpet is used, then, instead of finding another signal source, what you do is... Is quit the fucking game! Yes, quit the game to desktop! I repeat, to farm in this game! Quit it to desktop, John! Hell, if you want to, you can task kill the game, though I'm not sure how developers look at it or whether or not they consider it as a combat logging or breaking the TOS or not, but at this stage, fuck engineering! Anyhow, once on the desktop, get back into the game. Once in your ship, go into Super Cruise. And you'll notice at that point that there is a signal source right next to you. That is the same signal source. And as long as it has a lifetime on it, it will respawn like this. Now it's just a matter of time of turning around and farming the thing. Then finding another one and farming that one. 
Once you've filled up on grade 4 and fine materials, you can either go and exchange them or head to a different system with a different economy and stay together similar high grade crap. For more information as to where each material tends to spawn, I recommend looking up on Wikipedia or consulting ED Engineer. It's rather simple, but RNG still manages to somehow bork this. Just remember that materials that spawn in these high grades depend on the system economy and state. So it's up to you to either chase different ones or just stick with one and then exchange them. Or maybe go for both. And also like data materials, for this one there is a solo video available too. So again, check the description. Alright, now what you do, you've collected these materials, right? Next thing you need to do is literally quit the game. I shit you not. To collect high-grade materials on loop, you, you need to quit the fucking game. Let me just show you. Did you even look at what you found? Uh, proto radiolix and basically the trash tier of uh, high grades. Uh, uh, those are still useful. They said that this is intended gameplay. No, wow. not not that. First of all, that has to be prefaced uh, with, with the fact that no good game designer would say that this is how you should do it. This is just uh, yes. there's nothing illegal, uh, both in the sense of gameplay or exploits or whatnot else. This is just how the game should operate so, uh, when you're quitting so. and so on and so forth. Whether or not that is liked by the game des designer is probably not liked at all I because wonder, this is bullshit and I wonder, no yeah I very seriously wonder if the person that received the question that was asked understood the entire context of the question being asked you know why they had to put the uh, the valid gameplay tag on it Yamix do tell because the standard gameplay method is so bad that normal people don't want to do it that way. So the best time efficient way of doing it this way. And they don't want to ban all the players that are doing it this way because of the bad way that they program their game in the first place. So they're like, it's a feature. I mean, this is allowed, well, not only allowed, but this actually is a possible gameplay. And indeed, it is the best way, fastest way to collect these high, highest grade material items things then yep. convert them down mm -hmm. rather than going and playing the intended most desirable gameplay which is driving on planet surface or killing ships and then collecting smaller stuff from them which is notably notably slower that's mm -hmm. why we do it and that's just stupid the fact that they continue allowing this to be a thing both in design as well as in just the fact that it is a part of result of their design. They didn't care to change neither the drop rates nor anything like that. It's just like, eh? We can't be bothered. Doing this work, you know, streaming, making videos especially. Yay! All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a perfect way wow, to hit the start. hard crash. <laughs> After having grinded materials to your wit's end, I'm sorry. Honestly, I don't know why I feel compelled to say it, but I'm sorry. The game design is shit, and the developers are unapologetic about this. I feel none of them really have ever played the game to really realize how bad it is. Well, anyways, this section will focus on recommended upgrades I urge you to pick. Previously mentioned best to worst series also has good information, more in-depth stuff, so do take a look at it afterwards. So here we go. First off, to any ship, upgrade the FSD for long range. Doesn't matter what the ship is for or what its purpose is. Increased jump range will lessen the time it takes to get anywhere. This is a must upgrade number one. Next most popular upgrade is overcharged power plant. This upgrade really is only needed for ships that don't have enough power, especially something like a vulture. So it's a rather optional one, but still very popular upgrade. Then we also have a very useful dirty drive thruster upgrade. This makes the ship go faster and turn faster. Only explorers and maybe some trader ships might skip this upgrade, but generally a great quality of life improvement nearly to all ships and playstyles. Did you know developers at Frontier don't know basic math? Well, the proof is in the bulkhead pudding. 
If you apply heavy duty armor upgrade to the basic default bulkheads, no matter what ship it is, the weight penalty that would normally be applied to other bulkheads otherwise, here it does not exist. Reason for that? Default bulkheads has no weight. So if you multiply zero with uh, well, anything, the result is still zero. Genius! I think I learned this somewhere in the first grade or something like that, but seems since 2015 when Horizons was introduced, no one had finished elementary school, and here we are years later. An upgrade with no penalty. Of course, recommended for every ship. As for the shields, I have made a video on shield upgrade proving mathematically that reinforced base shield upgrade is the most beneficial all-rounder upgrade for all shields. And if you disagree, I'll see you in the next basement knife fight. But seriously though, watch my old video that explains why reinforced base upgrade is the best. And finally, charge enhanced power distributor. Just like with the shields, I can prove mathematically that the other upgrades are in fact garbage. No, seriously, they are almost all worse than the no upgrade power distributor. So, this is the only one that you should choose. And that's it on the few upgrades that are nearly unanimously picked. The system is large and there are massive variations that can work, so experiment. Though, considering that grinding materials is such a massive chore, maybe pick just one good build and stick with it. However, it's nothing compared to... <sighs> okay, feet engineering introduced in Odyssey and right off the bat I can tell you, do not do it! Do not do it! It's waste of your time, indeed. Both in emotional and in objective statistical way I can prove that it's worthless and waste of your time. You can really do the same fucking things with one of these or one of these. But if you're still intent on doing it, I guess I should give you some basics. Let's then start with some minor time savers. You can sometimes find upgraded weapons and suits up to grade 3 being sold for credits along with normal weapons in stations. Some of them have the so-called modifications, uh, from now on known as attachments, also included. But this is random and you can quite often get something really useless. Oh, and did you know, in front of development's mind, these developers who made Odyssey, in their fucking brains, they thought that it would make fucking sense to have these attachments non-removable. Yes, you strap a new scope onto a rifle, say, and pfft, that's it. It's glued on there and you cannot remove it, even by destroying the part, like you can on ship upgrades. This literally is retarded. Anyways, these partially upgraded weapons and suits, they appear to everyone, and once somebody buys it, it disappears. So, you have a better chance to find one in a station that no one visits. Also, considering that you can get at best grade 3 gear, that only saves you about 20% of the material cost from a fully upgraded part, not counting attachments. So, realistically, it's not a lot. Now before we get into more detailed material grinds, here are a few easiest ones you can force farm. Power regulators. You know that one thing in every base for the power generator. Yeah, instead of going for each base and wasting your time and effort stealing theirs, like a lobotomized chimp about to design another elite dangerous game mechanic, instead look towards mission boards. While some missions could potentially reward you with this part, instead look towards reactivation missions and similar ones. They already give you one regulator to fix a base. Now, what a cheeky fuck like you could do is not do that. Uh, abandon the mission, lose the reputation, but keep that regulator. Sure, eventually there won't be any more missions left due to lost reputation, but Elite has, um, millions of stations, so who the fuck cares? Go to the next one, rinse and repeat. Oh, and this thing particularly you will need only for suit upgrades. Next easiest and totally quality gameplay material you can collect is manufactured instructions. This thing will be needed for both suit and weapon upgrades. Now, first, you need to find a crash site, signal source on planet's surface, so go get your probulator and scan planets in human systems. You can get lucky and find one, though it's not the most reliable way. If you want a bit more reliable way, then you need to check out salvage missions on foot. Seek ones with schematics as a reward, they might produce the crash satellite a little bit more often. 
Now that you've found one of the two types of satellite, it's time. It's time for the quality gameplay that I teased you with. Just like with the high-grade emissions, get the material, download the data that you need, if it spawns the instructions, and QUIT THE FUCKING GAME! Log back in and repeat! Enjoy the quality fucking gameplay! Now, I gotta mention that satellite that is associated with a mission may only need main menu logout. But if it's a mission-free, random spawn, then quitting out of the fucking game will be the only way to refresh the loot. So yeah. Quality. Gameplay. Next up then, weapon schematics. This is another one of the bigger materials you will need. Now first, head to mission board, pick up procurement mission that does not ask for weapon schematics specifically. Head to the mission location and you will find containers that you can break into. Well, yes, you can find these things randomly with probulate or with missions, it's just simply more reliable. Break into one of these containers and don't pick any of the mission targets. Instead, in these crates you might find these weapon schematics. Log out to the main menu and back in. Yes, you will be locked into the container, unless of course it doesn't spawn immediately. In which case, just collect whatever you can at nauseum or once you're full and then commit Sudoku if you can't get out. And now we come to the more boring part, the general garbage day. So beyond the specific materials I already showcased, you will need all sorts of little things. Most of these you can't really force grind. And so, in order to collect all sorts of useful materials, first you will need a system in anarchy. Then just pick whichever type of a settlement you may need materials from and raid that for all it's worth. A place like Arya's mine and system Aya Bulu is a good example of a decent all-rounder, so I'll show you how to raid these fast, but the same principle will apply to any other base. First, you need to land near the comms center or a building that has the alarm disabling panel. Get inside, acquire the access level, don't worry about killing people here since it is anarchy system, you won't get bounty on you, nor will they grow hostile in time after repeat raids. Sometimes you might need to actually shoot somewhere to attract these assholes hiding inside restricted areas. Once you get the access level copied, find the alarms panel and disable it. This will make sure that random NPCs can't ask for endless amounts of reinforcements. Now it's time to start looting! At this stage, just start looting whatever you can and once you're full, either drop what you don't need or go trade it in to the fucking bartender that doesn't give out drinks on top of it. Anyways, here both the system state and economy determines building types and those determine what crap RNGs will spawn in. Regardless, it may take a bit of pattern learning as well as helpful notes from ED Engineer or Wiki to learn where you can find additional materials. Also, it's better to pick up multiple SRVs with you. See, your spacesuit has arbitrarily imposed limited inventory to waste your time even more. There's literally no other reason. So what you'll end up doing most of the time while gathering these materials is this. <laughs> I'm not kidding! Jump in the SRV, drive up to a building, get out, go collect the space crack, once full, get back to the SRV, jump in, jump out, go back, collect whatever's left, and contemplate the meaning of death. Well, you know, that sort of thing. And then repeat. And then, the best part, in order to reset this base's materials, you have to jump into your ship, go in Super Cruise, immediately drop out of it and go back to the base. That's the only way you can reset the items on the base. Desktop logging doesn't work, menu logging doesn't work. That's how far it feels developers are willing to go to prevent you from refarming, rather than dealing with the actual problem. It's like putting a bandage over a landmine's victim's wounds and calling it a day. Once you're done grinding most of the crap or just can't seem to get the fucking RNGs to cooperate, well, whatever's left can always be gathered through mission rewards. I hate doing it, but for my spacesuit upgrades that took 27 fucking hours straight, I did use missions as the last ditch attempt for the last little bits of crap. Oh, and yes, it actually does take 27 hours straight. Not casual, but speed grinding to get one spacesuit done. Check out the video that I made about it. It really is staggering. 
And sure, for weapons it's slightly less than that, but it's still about 24 hours for each gear item. What the fuck? This is why I said it's bullshit and not worth anyone's time, when the same effect and more can be achieved with one speedy boy or poopy boy. I hate this game design so much. But there you go. Don't do it, but if you do, thank fuck for me. And of course, watch the videos. Maybe support me on Patreon for my pain and suffering I went through. Still, just like with the ship engineering, if somehow you choose to upgrade this crap. Well, first off, plasma pistol and shotgun are the only good weapons. All else is shit and totally not worth your time. Second, Maverick suit inventory and reduced tool consumption attachments might be quite useful. Third, battery reserves might be okay for all of the suits and maybe shield regen and resistances for Dominator if you really, really think that Odyssey combat is somehow not an outsourced garbage. All else is really a waste of time and effort. Fourth, for weapons, magazine size, reload speed, and maybe hip fire attachments could be useful, but again, it's like picking puke out of the shit cereal. Okay. And uh, here we go, and uh... I cannot do this anymore. Seriously, all this is a piece of shit. No, I'm fucking done. No, I'm. I'm fucking no, I'm done. So, what have you learned there, kids? Of uh, mostly 40 years and above? Well, the ship engineering is rather simple when summarized, but in reality is a massive life-draining grind that rewards you with both gameplay ruining, uh, gameplay, as well as highly unbalanced upgrades without whom your gameplay sadly will suffer, which in turn forces you to grind and therefore ruin the game for yourself. A circular catch-22 of the shittiest order, like some sort of infinite loop human centipede. As for the Odyssey-related stuff, please don't spend the 60 plus hours that a normal casual player would spend grinding this crap by just not playing Odyssey. Hell, go visit the center of the galaxy, go write a word cunt in the star map by discovering systems, go to Colonia, fuck, play a different, non-frontier developed game. Or maybe just, I don't know, watch my videos. But for fuck's sakes, do not waste your time with this feet engineering. As a whole, this system, be it for ships or feet, both are one of the worst looting, grinding, upgrading gameplays I've ever seen. And the fact that literally quitting the fucking game just two moments later restart it in order to not waste your time with intended gameplay loops should make anyone who had a hand in development of these travesties ashamed of themselves and their life choices. And don't be that kind of an idiot in the comments saying that, well, you don't need to do this, why force yourself? Well, Todd, sadly, that's not exactly how the game is designed, now is it? These upgrades make anyone using them far better than anyone else without them. So you are, shall we say, heavily encouraged to grind? But the real pathetic part of this grind is that it's so unappealing and garbage, moreover, massive waste of time in its normal form that players need to resort to this sort of level of game-breaking method just to save 10 to 100 times of the gameplay playtime. So just remember that old Valve quote about game sales. To fight piracy, you offer a more convenient way instead. Same goes with this sort of shit grind. Offer us a better way than the garbage game-breaking quitting methods, damn it. But as a finishing note, instead of being ashamed of doing these gameplay loops, well, be proud of supporting content like mine by subscribing, liking, that bell notification stuff, and more so supporting on Patreon, YouTube members, wherever you can. Links for all of them down below. The reason I can be explicit in my language and expression is, well, thanks to you. So for now, let me know what I may have missed or maybe should have mentioned down below. But until then, I'm off to, well, actually have fun.